Good morning, good morning. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Whatever time you are watching this, this is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice Making Them Happen. And today we are on part two of the Creality CR10 S5 upgrades. However, I've managed to get a hold of two S3s that have got problems today with their nozzles. So let's get to it, shall we? Right then, so this week I received a message from my buddy Nick saying that he had some serious troubles with both his S3 Creality printers. The majority of the issues on both printers seem to be clogging. I was about to learn a valuable lesson in tracing problems back from the nozzle to the filament. After Nick telling me about constant clogging, I figured it was most likely down to one or two things. Either his constant tears due to printer fails were affecting the filament, or there was a blockage between the feed and the nozzle. I took this as an opportunity to perform a full teardown of both printers. Firstly by performing a hot and then a cold pull, which is a process where you push the filament into the heat block and nozzle and swiftly pull the filament out to extract the deposits of dirt, grime and leftover plastic. This did free up some but not all. Then I took both hot ends, nozzles and heat brakes and soaked them in IPA for a couple of hours before washing them and further clean up with a Dremel. You can see in this photo that the heat brake still had deposits, even after soaking in IPA. And while I was in there, I decided to also replace a 40 switch. The image in the top left hand corner is a big water filament that I just managed to pull out, which is really nice and very satisfying. So all that is left to do now is reassemble that hot end. As you can see there, everything is nice and clean and tidy. And as you assemble the hot end, making sure that you are pointing it towards the right hand side to make sure the cables go in and making sure you're looking after that for mister by not over tightening it. As you can see here, I'm just putting the Bowden tube back in, although I hate that bloody thing. We are still persevering forward with it on this particular machine. But I'm also conscious that this machine will probably be direct drive within the next couple of weeks because I know Nick's put the order in. So I'm just making the last minute checks, tightening everything up and making sure that nothing is going to go wrong. Right, so we're off to printing now. It seems to be going quite well so far, however... And we're back and I'm glad to say that one of the printers is working. Unfortunately, the other one is still a little bit temperamental. It's still got a huge amount of under extrusion for some bizarre reason, being that we've replaced the majority of the hot end. You know, it's, it's, it's just very, very odd. I'm kind of feeling that maybe it's something to do with the software or possibly something to do with the temperature overall. But we'll get onto that in a little bit. The other printer though is working perfectly. So hot and cold pull worked really, really well. And it's, it's printing really, really well now. Um, and here's a picture. Right, it's about an hour or so later and Nick's just popped round to pick his printer up and he's informed me while we were discussing it that he did change his motherboard out recently and I kind of now have got the suspicion that it might be a power issue, the reason why that extruder is um, underperforming. But next week we will be looking at how to modify those VREF settings, which basically means how to modify the voltage that goes to your stepper motor. We'll also be looking at the Big Tree Tech 1.4 SKR turbo board and the TMC 2209 drivers that I've got installed in my other printer at the moment. And in other news this week, I'd like to thank Azure Film for sending me this transparent filament for my x -Lights project. And I'd certainly recommend checking those guys out because they are very competitive with their pricing. And if you want to see how that project's coming along, check out my Instagram post at instagram.com forward slash the real Sam Prentice. Next, I look at the Z axis. Of the Z axis. It's this awesome little bearing. The only problem with this bearing, though, is that it's got a lot of slop in there. Look at that. Who came up with that idea? Rubbish. So with that amount of slop in the bearing, I took to making this Z-axis sync modification that I found on Thingiverse. The link is in the description. It basically makes sure that the sync of the two Z-axis is correct uh, with movement up and down. I had a few homing issues over the last couple of days with the new software that I've installed on here. Uh, the only one problem is the belt does need to be a whole belt. You shouldn't have any joins in it, otherwise it won't go around correctly. And basically it won't allow it to go up as far as you would need it to, just about a couple of inches at the moment. So there you go, the link's in the description anyway. And finally, the amazing Slice Engineering, who have sent me their latest innovation, the Copperhead Hot End. I'll be doing a full review showing you how I'm going to install it onto my CR10, I hope next week, and giving it a full review before I run out of juice. This product was fully funded on Kickstarter and claims to eliminate heat creep. That's one for you, Nick. So I think that pretty much wraps it up for this week. All the links of products I've mentioned in this video will be in the description. Please make sure you subscribe and like the video if you've enjoyed it. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.